Hello and welcome to Pen Writers Presents. I am Joy Gibbons, joined here by my co-host Rhonda Battenfelder and our wonderful guest for this month, Sandy Van Everdingen. Sandy Van, author of Second in Command, as well as a wonderful brand new verse novel, Listen Up, both from West 44 Books. Sandy, thank you for joining us today. You're welcome. It's good to be here. All right. So um, why don't you tell us a little bit about your work, uh, your young adult novels in verse, and uh, your experiences as a writer and poet to this point? Okay. Um, so, well, I'm going to start, well, going backwards, I'll start with my writing journey because we'll get to the verse novels. Is that sort of the, where we are now in the journey. Um, but my journey is a bit convoluted, but stick with me because, you know, well, everything has a reason. Um, I do believe that everything in life has a purpose and a reason. Um, so I am actually a, a teacher or was a teacher um, by trade. And um, in 2011, I was teaching high school and there was um, a, a terrible accident right near my house. Um, a young girl was killed by a drunk driver. It was a hit and run and um, he wasn't convicted. So it really upset me and kind of inspired me to write a book about it. I'd always loved writing. I loved writing poetry, short stories. I journaled all from probably when I was about six or seven years old all the way through college. Um, so it inspired me to write a book, but I had no idea how to write a full length novel. Um, nevertheless, I tried anyway. And uh, around that time, a few years after that, I stopped teaching because I was long term subbing and I didn't get um, called back for the fall. So I decided to start volunteering at my son's school. And this is important because um, I volunteer to be the co-chair of a reading program. And the other co-chair, very nice person, we met and we're chatting. She was also a teacher. And then I mentioned that I'm trying to write a book and she said, oh, I write books too. And we got to talking and lo and behold, she kind of invited me to join her little writers group that she had. And that moment in my life changed everything. Um, everyone I'm sure on Pen Writers knows Dee Romito. Um, she has been part of Pen Writers for a long time and very active in the writing community. Wonderful, wonderful person. Um, and she, she really changed my life because I met um, our local writers group through her. And then she st actually started Binkley, which is our um, kind of our, the offshoot of SCBWI in Buffalo, Niagara region. Um, I met Joy and Rhonda through her. I started going to pen writers conferences because of her and other conferences. Um, so yeah, she really opened the door for me. Um, I learned how to write craft. Um, I started going to conferences. I learned how to network, which was really scary for me because I'm a bit of an introvert. Um, so, but all of those things started kind of happening. And um, I did eventually finish that first book. Um, it was bad. <clears throat> At the time though, I thought it was great. I finished the novel. So, you know, I wrote a novel and I broke the cardinal rule. I let everyone read my first draft. <laughs> um, which was not very good. So that was a bit of a learning experience. I learned then from that, that's a, that was about um, 2015. So I started, uh, I did some revisions, started querying it, continued to go to conferences, um, got to meet Janet Reed, the query shark. That was very exciting. And, um, you know, kind of eventually realized it wasn't gonna work as a, a novel. Um, so started a second novel. Um, also, they're both, they're both young adults. And um, around that time, I had started going to a critique group. And through that critique group, met um, Katie, who was my editor for West 44, eventually. Um, she says, so this is probably about 2017 or so. Um, she put out a call for writers who were interested in doing, there was a new um, imprint that she was starting through, um, Rosen books where she worked and they were looking for people to write young adult novels in verse. And I thought, well, I like to write poetry. I like to write young adult. I'll give it a try. Um, so I pitched my idea and the second in command for those that don't know what it's about is um, about a young boy whose mother gets deployed and he has to deal with um, the consequences of kind of taking over for the family. His dad works really long hours and he's the oldest of three. His younger brother gets in a bit of trouble at school and the main character has to figure out how to handle all of that. Um, 
And it was inspired by a family that I met when my husband was deployed back in 2003. Um, so it's something I felt really strongly about military families, kind of giving them a space and a voice. And um, so I pitched it, they liked it, um, signed the contract and started writing. So that was really exciting. It was a little bit not the traditional path that I was expecting. I thought I would write a book, query it, get an agent, go on sub, do all that great stuff. But it took a little bit of a different path, but that's okay. Um, so second in command um, came out in 2019, 2018. Um, and right around that time, I had also pitched um, a second idea for a first novel. I think it might be frozen. I think we might have lost Amy for a second there. I think we did too. Let's see. Oh, we had a little bit of a technical hiccup there, <laughs> but we're all back in one place now. Uh, so Sandy, you were just saying how Second in Command came out in the fall of 2018, and then you were going on from there. Yes, sorry. Um, so actually, so Second Command came out in February of 2018, or. 2019, I was writing it in 2018. Um, and then that around that same time, I got the contract for Listen Up. So it was actually kind of a funny story because um, I had pitched it over a year, like a year earlier and just kind of figured that, that they were interested. Um, and so that fall said, uh, my agent or uh, editor said, would you like to, we're interested in, in this first novel that you proposed, um, can you write it in a month? So that was a little scary. <laughs> and then a few months after that, I actually um, was, pitched an idea for a third verse novel. And that, um, well, I can talk about that in a little bit because that's part of my 2020 writing um, fun. So, but yeah, so I'll have three total um, verse novels from West 44. And um, like I said, they're really great. They've actually opened some nice doors because um, I've been able to meet with librarians and teachers and students um, that normally would not have picked up a book and, and read it, a full length book. So they're excited about being able to read and finish um, a novel because it's something that's a little bit easier for them to digest. And so I, it ties with my teaching background and it's been really fun to have that um, experience <laughs> in a nutshell. <laughs> Thank you. I think that's a great summary. And I think it really just your kind of explanation of your background really shows how uniquely suited you are to this kind of literary work, um, bringing in reluctant readers through verse and really telling these stories that I think are so current and um, also, you know, very timeless stories of responsibility and finding your voice. Um, but like you look at your covers, I don't have the cover here for Listen Up, but I love how just fresh it is with like the, the thumbs up for the dot of the eye and stuff like that, like tying in social media and, and the now. <laughs> uh, Sandy, what were the similarities and differences in your writing process for Second in Command and Listen Up? So I had, um, when Second in Command, when the con we signed the contract. So um, I actually signed the contract based on the first 500 words and a, a query basically, um, and then had to submit an outline um, and um, we had different deadlines. So there was a deadline for the outline and it, including a character breakdown and then your first 1000 words. And then kind of after that, um, you were on your own to finish the first draft. Um, so it was similar for Listen Up, but the timeline was a lot squishier. Like I said, it, she, I only had a month to get it done. Um, so that was a little scary. And um, I think for me, um, having those that outline to go on, having that character chart to go on, um, having those deadlines in place was actually really helpful. I sat down and figured out how many words I had to write each time I sat down at a writing session um, and stuck to that deadline as best I could so that I could turn it in on time. Because for me, like knowing that something was due, it's, you know, it has to be turned in and I wanted to be able to have a few critique partners read it before I turned it in. Um, so I hit those deadlines because I had that in place. So having the structure was really helpful for me versus like when I'm writing a novel and there is no deadline and there is no structure in place. It, I sort of just, I'm like, right, do I feel like writing? Maybe, how much am I gonna get done? I don't know. So um, the structure was helpful. Um, for the second in command, I, um, 
uh, followed, we, we had, to, it had to be exactly 200 pages. It had to be exactly 10 or close to 10,000 words. So I also tried to give myself that knowing what I would hitting my certain plot points at certain times. I was a little bit more laid back with listen up. And then the third one, I kind of didn't really follow that at all, but then it ended up creating more work in the revision process. So I guess one piece of advice, if especially those you can do outlines, outline as much as you can in the beginning and figure stuff out as much as you can, because as you're writing, um, it makes it a little easier. And then the revisions are a lot easier when you have that structure in place up front and you follow it throughout the story, <laughs> which isn't always, easy. Sometimes our characters do things we don't want them to do. Um, and in Listen Up, I got a little stuck um, when I was writing it. And with poetry, that's harder because you can't really, you have to rearrange entire poems or rewrite entire poems. Um, so it's not like you're just rewriting a particular scene or a paragraph. You have to rearrange the poems and make sure they still flow from one to the next. And then each individual poem makes sense as well. So that's it. And then I guess the only other, I really wanted to incorporate specific poetry styles so that teachers could use that in the classroom. Like there's some haikus in there and some tankas and there's um, a pantoum in the first book. So um, there's all different kinds of things you can look for if you're teaching the book um, that, that students are learning about in their classroom, in their English classroom. So yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I didn't even realize that there were like kind of Easter eggs in your books of types of poetry. And that's so interesting to think about how you can just fit that into a larger story without it feeling intrusive or, or you know, with it just moving with the story. Um, and thank you for explaining the revision process. Like I can only imagine, I, I am in awe of you and your work and anybody who can write in verse because I cannot. Um, I can rhyme like Dr. Seuss, but I can't do what you do. <laughs> um, and to think about taking uh, taking it through drafts, you're not just tweaking a word, you're not just moving a sentence, you're you're essentially rewriting as you revise. Is that how it works? Um, sometimes, I mean, I was having a hard time following the structure in the beginning. So I would usually sit down, open up. I had two word documents. One was just like writing the, the poems. And then I would go in and look at the structure because poetry isn't just about the words. It's about also the way it looks on the page. Um, and so a lot of times I didn't want to think about that while I was writing. I just wanted to get the ideas down. And then I would go back and play around with how it looked on the page. So that's important too. Um, so that, I mean, I would sit down and maybe only get like two, 300 words written because it takes that much longer. And you're really thinking about the choice that you're making. And I couldn't use words that were too complicated um, because of the, trying to keep it at a lower reading level too. So um, it's, it can be a little confining, but I think poetry is awesome because there's like little juicy nuggets in there every once in a while, you know? And so I'll go back and reread it and say, oh yeah, <laughs> that was good. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Yes. Um, and it's like you have to make every, because of all the white space that you leave, you have to make every word work harder. You have to make every word work toward that purpose. Um, and I mean, I definitely can see that reading through your work, that there's, there's nothing is wasted, um, which is really, really cool to see from a prose perspective as well. So thank you for just being so fabulously uh, artistic and creative with your words. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so Sandy, listening to you, I feel like we already have a sense of if you are a pantser or a plotter, especially for the verse novels with your outlines, which was such a great suggestion. But do you change depending on what type of work you're work writing? Um, are you always feel like you're a plotter or are there times that you just sit down and free write? Um, I definitely started out as a pantser um, because I just thought, I'm just going to write this book and I don't know where it's going. It's going to just take me places. Um, and that's not really easy to do. Um, so yeah, I might sit down and start to write until I get some ideas. But um, for the most part, I like to have some kind of structure, at least like knowing what's happening, whether it's using like the beat sheet or, you know, um, some other type of plot tool to just at least know, okay, what's happening the main points of the story, where is it going to end, you know, what's going to be my climax and kind of working through it. And I actually, um, 
the most recent novel that I started working on um, that I've kind of abandoned after about 20,000 words because I was struggling with the plot. I tried working backwards. I knew how I wanted it to end and I tried to go backwards from there. Um, but unfortunately, the characters have been kind of wandering around. And so that one I've put on the back burner until I really figure out how to get them where they need to go. Because I will just, you, I find myself just kind of wandering into nothing. Um, so I think it's helpful, even if you are a pantser, to have a set destination um, because it helps and it helps keep you on track. It helps keep you goals. But I do know people who just sit down and, and write and whatever, you know, moves them. Um, as the characters whisper in their ears and things like that. So yeah, I would say um, I definitely try to outline as much as I can because it does help um, in the end and it makes the revision a lot less painful, so yeah. <laughs> um, it's clear from the way that you kind of set up your work and your educational background that you really take a, a thoughtful, um, systematic approach to creative uh, to creative writing. Um, are there any particular like craft books or uh, workshops or things that stand out to you along the way as things that have been helpful for you? Um, I, you know, I was, it's funny, the book that I first read, um, I don't have it on my shelf because I gave it to my dad. Um, I think I have her workbooks, The Plot Whisperer. Um, that was the first craft book that I read besides Stephen King's because everyone reads that one, right? Um, and, oh, well, he wouldn't, I would guess I wouldn't call that craft. But anyway, um, I followed her basic outline in the beginning when I was learning about writing. Um, I've tried to use um, the, the Save the Cat, the beat sheets. I feel like they're a little bit too nuanced for me. Um, I prefer just like basic plot points. Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't, I've read a lot of craft books and I take a little bit from each one, I think. So I can't say there's one that I like live and die by. Um, writing poetry uh, of form, a friend of mine and Rotera teacher lent me a, a poetry book specifically to look at the structure of the poetry, but I, I don't know that there are any out there specifically on how to write verse novels um, that I've read anyway. So I think it, it, our editor came up with her adaptation of the Save the Cat, but for verse novels, and she um, adapted it to the length that we needed, um, and that really helped. So we 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 followed hers basically. Most of us that were writing um, in the series would follow those. So um, that helps. I'll have to give Katie credit for that. <laughs> Yeah, and, and there is so much that's similar, right, among different types of writing, like you can take a, a craft book kind of in a different direction than maybe it was originally intended because so much of the, the underlying creative work remains the same. Yeah. Um, so you got into this a little bit earlier, but can you tell us a little bit more um, as a Pen Writers member now for for a good bit, right? Like five-ish years? Yeah, awesome. One for the thumb. Um, tell us a little bit about your experiences in the pen writers community, especially as you've moved from three published author to now multi-published author. Um, so yeah, my first conference was in 2015. That was um, that I went with Dee. And um, it's just been a, such a great community. I've met so many amazing people um, and, and in fact, in um, 2016, I went by myself and that was terrifying, um, but I, they, everyone was just like so friendly and so welcoming and I always have a blast. Like it, it was crushing. It was probably one of the most disappointing parts of 2020 um, that we weren't able to get together. And I was glad that we had the reading critique and um, were able to chit chat with each other over Zoom a little bit um, after that. So that was good, but it just isn't, you know, it isn't the same as seeing everyone. Um, you know, some of my closest friends are pen writers and I've always come back from the conference feeling incredibly energized. So um, I, I can't say enough about how amazing it is. And um, I've, I got the opportunity a couple of years ago to judge the poetry contest and that was really fun. Um, so it kind of gave me another side of things and, um, you know, cause I'd entered it myself um, and then got to be a judge. So that was really cool. Um, and, I don't know, I've also, like, I love the off the wall. I have a collection of all my um, awards <laughs> from winning the off the wall contest, which is always- I think you've racked up quite a few, uh, yes. quite a few accolades. I think I have six, six or seven of them. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah so um, that's always fun, just being able to like read other people's work and, um, and see that in an anonymous way. Um, so yeah, and 
I, I have not gone to any of the smaller ones. I mean, we're up in New York, so it's a little harder um, to, I did go virtually this year, but um, you know, we're the Buffalo gals. So we kind of bring, <laughs> bring the party with us when we come down. Um, yeah, but yeah. We, we love the Buffalo gals. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and I've done, I mean, met agents and, and editors and had conversations with everyone that's been there has been really supportive. I mean, I don't have an agent right now, but I've certainly like networked with them and they've all been very, um, very kind and, you know, sharing knowledge of the industry. And um, so that's been really awesome too, to be able to meet those people at, at the conferences too. So, so yay, pen writers. <laughs> Yeah, I'm so excited because that's how I met you lovely ladies. So I'm extremely grateful for pen writers for that opportunity for sure. Um, Sandy, you hinted to this earlier, but could you share with us what you're currently working on? Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> so 2020, how about it? Um, it's so, year. So, it's been, it's um, been a whole year. It's been a year. Has it been a year or a hundred years? Um, so at it was what Feb February time frame. I was working on my third verse novel, um, which is about an, an like it's about an environmental issue. We'll just leave it at that. Um, so it was actually due March fifteenth. Um, so <laughs> that was interesting. I got it in on time, um, but then I had to do the revision part, which was difficult because I pretty much didn't want to get out of bed. I mean, you April and March were were difficult times for, for everybody. So um, that was tough. So I, I worked on the revisions because the deadline, um, and then that book was actually due to be released in the spring and now it's being delayed because of everything with the publishing industry. So, um, and even having like Listen Up coming out in October, um, it kind of came out with like a little <laughs> because of everything that's happening. Um, so after that, after I finished the third verse novel, I um, tried to go back into what I affectionately call my snow story, which I usually only write in the summertime, um, is about a, um, a girl who gets stuck uh, on the throughway in a terrible snowstorm because Buffalo. Um, and was worked on it a little bit, but I kept kind of getting stuck and um, have now been I've been doing some poetry, uh, my blog a little bit, so been trying to work on that. Um, and I have an idea right now that I haven't quite figured out how to flesh out and it might be middle grade. So we'll just say that that's going on and Dee is very trying to strong arm me to coming over to middle grade, um, which is what she writes. So join us. Join us. <laughs> as do Rhonda and Joy. <laughs> so, so we'll see how that goes. I, um, you know, I had an idea for a fourth verse novel, but I haven't done any work on that one. I'm um, not sure if I'm going to write that one or not. And then, uh, like I said, the, the middle grade is kind of, it's in there. It's 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 whispering. I, I kind of have an idea, but I haven't sat down to write anything yet. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but it is, I think it's important to, um, well, we, we, we joke in the house that we lower, it's lowered expectations. 2020 is lowered expectations. Like it's okay if you're not writing because, I have my children most of the time are home doing Zoom school and um, it's hard to sit down and write. I can't go to Wegmans or Spot or, you know, the library books. I can't do the go to the places where I used to go and hide. And, and I did a lot of my writing actually um, at this indoor soccer center, which I'm not allowed into anymore. Um, so I can't go in there and write. And that's, I mean, my muse is probably sitting there waiting for me. And <laughs> In. So <laughs> um, it, you got to adjust. And unfortunately, when we first started, I first started working from home, I turned my um, writing office into my work office. And that kind of messed things up for me, I think, psychologically. So um, I'm just trying to find that space to get back into writing. I'm hoping um, once, maybe once things calm down a little bit, if that ever happens, that I'll be able to get back into it. So we'll see. Um, hopefully something soon. <laughs> Yeah, I, I hear you on the uh, losing your creative space to 2020. Um, I heard somebody say for anybody who's working from home, they're not working from home, they're living at work. Um, and it, it does tend to kind of suck up all your time and, and energy, that, that, that time that you wanna spend at a desk working on your creative work, it's, it gets zapped pretty quickly, yeah. 
Um, well, looking to 2021, which is just over a month away, not that far. Um, what uh, what are you looking forward to in the, the post pandemic world, uh, both as a writer, as a pen writer, as a creative, and just as a person ready to get through this year? What's giving you hope? Well, um, being able to go back into Spot Coffee and which is our local coffee shop, order myself a matcha tea and a hummus wrap and sit down for like two hours and just write. <laughs> um, I come home smelling like a coffee shop because I miss that. So um, I, I, seeing my friends is really, that's been something that I think, I mean, I've been able to see a few people at socially distanced walks, things like that, but now it's cold again. Um, so I really, I miss my community very much. Um, so being able to see my friends, you know, we, we, um, we often connect for writers groups and, and things like that. And we're trying to do stuff online, but it's not, um, it's not the same. Um, so I, I have hope that that will return again, that we will be able to get together uh, at a writing conference again and see each other and sit around and, you know, and share ideas and, um, you know, just have a good time being together and, and having that in it. Because I really believe that, um, there's so much creative energy in, in that community, you know, and it's so important not to lose that. And um, it's hard because writing is already a solitary act. You're sitting in your space and writing alone. Um, so having other people to share your ideas and to talk with and just to be around has, um, hopefully that will be returning in 2021. Um, that and dancing because <laughs> Uh, one of the last things I did before um, the pandemic hit was go to my my favorite, it's not even a concert, it's like it's this DJ that plays only Cure and Smith songs all night long. And it's so fun, you just dance and I go by myself every year and it was like two weeks before everything shut down. Um, and so I kind of miss being able to be like with people, having that energy and all that stuff. So. Um, which is weird to say for an introvert, but I do have moments where I want to be around people. <laughs> That's one of them. So yeah, and as far as I'm um, creatively, like I said, I really do hope I can start writing again and kind of get unblocked um, and just giving myself permission to, to do that. Um, you know, maybe writing some some smaller things and and having those, having that opportunity. So yeah. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that because I think it's so important, like you said, for people to hear that you have moments where that muse is there for you and writing comes maybe a little bit easier and then times you really need to give your system a break just to um, recharge. So thank you for sharing that that was part of your year as well because it was for us as well, um, definitely. Sandy, what advice would you give to aspiring authors? I think, well, don't give up, first of all. Um, writing is so different for everyone. Every, I've listened to so many people um, tell their stories and their journeys. And I mean, I have a friend who was signed by the first agent she queried and they were able to submit her book and get a and, uh, book deal within a month. So that doesn't normally happen. Um, if you hear people, stories of people who queried for years and years and years. Um, so everybody's journey is different. You know, you might choose to, write and never publish anything or publish it by yourself or, you know, it, it doesn't determine your success, I don't think. Um, and everyone's different in how they sit to write. You know, you might be super disciplined and write regularly, or you might take, you know, eight months off and not write anything. And that's okay. I think giving yourself permission to just be the kind of writer that you need to be in that moment is important. Um, Writing found me. I like I said, I wrote so much when I was a teenager, and I was super angsty. Um, and coming back to that writing poetry again after years of not doing it was was interesting, and it it kind of opened up an, a part of me that I'd been missing. Um, so kind of being open to opportunities you wouldn't necessarily expect. Um, you know, saying yes to things because I remember when. Katie said, oh, I'm looking for people to write verse novels. And some of my friends were like, ew, verse novels. Um, but I'm like, sure, why not? I'll give it a try, you know? <laughs> so um, that, and I, I actually have a couple of weird um, advice, pieces of advice um, just to help with encouragement. So 
I've done Camp Nano Remo a few years. Um, I didn't do it. I've never done Nano because fifty thousand words in a month is really scary. But I did Camp, and one year for Camp, I actually wrote myself letters that I opened up each week, and they were just like inspirational letters, just like you know, dear Sandy, um, and then some stuff, and just like you know, remember your words matter. You have a gift. Believe in yourself. Every journey is an opportunity to grow. Love me, you know, so being able to open those letters and then have them on my cork board to refer to kind of helps with inspiration or if like other people have said things inspirational to me, I'll put them on the cork board and leave them there. Um, so like I have a thing from my son made me in preschool. Um, and I also, this is actually a pen writer's run idea. And I don't know who the person was that taught this class. I believe it was when I was there in 2016, but she gave us all journals and said on the first page, we had to write all of like our self doubt. And then we crumpled it all up and we threw it all out. And then we wrote and we reframed it all to say those things in a positive way. And I did that on the first page. And then I save positive things that people have said to me about my writing. And, um, and I put them in the book. And when I'm feeling kind of meh, I can go back and read the nice things that people have said. Um, and it helps because I think we can be our own biggest critic and having that self-doubt can be really paralyzing. So he hearing what other people say. Um, so if you know a writer, <laughs> compliment them on something that they've written if you enjoyed it because they might be putting it in a book and referring to it when they feel sad. So um, this, I think I've told my students to do this too that I've talked to because um, you know when you're, writing when you're starting out as a writer even as a student um, it can be difficult to feel confident um, so that's been that's been helpful um, of course I procrastinate so I haven't done anything in there recently but <laughs> um, it helps especially if once you're out there in the world there's going to be negative stuff too so trying to push past that um, negative commentary and just kind of absorb the positive stuff is is a lot healthier um, you know because you can't not read the reviews, but they're not always going to be good. So try to focus on the, the positive things that people have said more than the negative things. And that that helps. That helps me anyway. So I think that's awesome advice for anyone, <laughs> um, especially writers, because we are wracked with self-doubt at any given moment. But um, but I think that's so cool to combine your positive self-talk, um, you know, self-encouragement with the validation of your work by other people like that that just feels so healthy to to, to keep that in mind because you're right like the when you hear something negative it, it naturally tends to stick with you a little more uh, easily like a little burr in your sweater um so i love that thank you for showing us like how you can mindfully keep those positives in, in place that's great I keep thinking since you started, and this is really um, a unique experience for the three of us where we all met through pen writers so many years ago. So I keep thinking just like the serendipitousness of, of um, how that was such a vital part of all of our journeys, that chance meeting by um, putting ourselves out there and going to pen writers and meeting some new people and the lasting friendships that have come from that and how important that has been um, for my writing journey. And I love uh, hearing all of these moments from you today. So I'm so grateful for you to share those because um, you know your writing is just beautiful and gorgeous and lovely. And I'm so excited that you took that chance to say yes to the verse novels because you, that's what it seems like you're meant to do that. So. Um, you know, it's wonderful that that opportunity that you said yes to that. And we're all blessed because you took that opportunity. So thank you very much. Um, and thank you for thank just you saying yes. <laughs> keep saying yes, Sandy. <laughs> I just keep thinking about how Rhonda and I met on Twitter, right? And um, then when we met in person and Dee was like, I think that's Rhonda, the girl from Twitter. <laughs> and you basically were like, can I come to dinner with you guys? <laughs> and we're like, okay, sure. We'll take this strange girl out to dinner that we only know from social media. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> don't be afraid. Go to conferences and, I feel and like talk you're pretty to safe, people. right? Like. She looks safe. She, she was safe. It was good. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
Well, is there anything else you would like to share with your uh, fellow pen writers, fellow writing community audience? Um, no, I guess just hang in there because like I said, I know this has been a, just a, a crummy year and um, it's been really, it's been tough for me emotionally with everything that's happening. I like control and I don't have any um, and my job is keeps changing, but I'm thankful that I still have one and my kids school keeps changing, but I'm thankful that we're all healthy. So everything is kind of like good and bad um, and just trying to find that that balance there and knowing that, you know, we're, we're all together, I guess, and together separately um, as we're all separating from ourselves, but we're together in, the, in terms of we're all kind of battling the same emotions and the same difficulties, um, you know, dealing with this. So I think we'll all come out the other end one way or the other and um, just keep writing because stories are so important. I mean, at the beginning of the pandemic, I was having trouble reading, but once I got, you know, into reading, I realized just, you know, there are so many amazing stories out there that are so important for different reasons. And, you know, it, it helps to have that, that place where you can escape into someone else's imagination. Um, so keep writing, <laughs> don't give up. And, you know, hopefully I will see everyone in 2021 in May <laughs> um, at Pen Writers. So um, yeah, here, thank here. you Joy and Rhonda for this opportunity. It's been really fun to see your faces and to chat with you. So I've enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Likewise, hundred percent. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Um, yes, thank you. Thank you. This was so fun. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to stop the feed for this interview now. So uh, for Pen Writers Presents, I'm Joy Gibbons for Rhonda Battenfelder and our wonderful guest, Sandy Van. And we will see you in 2021. Thanks. <laughs>